Amen. Thank you, Peggy. Good morning, good morning. My name is Scott Beard. I'm the lead pastor here for one more Sunday <laughs> today. It's so great to be here and worship with you. Um, it's been such a great experience. We're going to say more about this as the morning goes on, but just welcome. I pray that this is a, a worshipful time for you, that you experience maybe some, some things about God that, that help, help you in your journey, that each of your steps along the way is smoothed out as you know the Lord and you know he loves you and he wants to be with you at all times. It is a beautiful day to be worshiping together, whether you are joining us online or here in this space. We are glad you are here. I am our Momentum and Discipleship Pastor, Reverend Jennifer Finley. It is a beautiful joy to be gathering together a couple of announcements and words of guidance as we begin this time together. Uh, one is that we invite you to fill out a connection card. That is how we know that you are here, but more importantly, that is how we can be in prayer for you and your family or those that you know and love. You can click online our online connection card or you can fill it out in the pews in front of you and put that in the offering plate as it comes by later in the worship service um, our worship is guided by our online bulletin or our on our screens or our bulletins as you received as you came in the room a couple of quick announcements um, after worship we invite you to stay and join us for a beautiful farewell reception retirement reception for scott and ann that will be downstairs in the fellowship hall and if you don't know where that is we'll have folks directing you um, at the end of worship we invite you if you are planning to stay simply to go ahead and go on down there'll be a slideshow playing there's plenty of amazing finger foods um, out and we invite you to go ahead and fill a plate and to start to mingle to enjoy the slideshow um, as we all make our way down and then we'll start the formal program. It'll be a beautiful time of fellowship and celebration. Um, but before that, we have this opportunity to worship together as we do each week. And so if you are worshiping online, we invite you to have a source of light, perhaps a candle with you as we do here. And we do this each and every week as we light candles to acknowledge the power of the Holy Spirit that is already at work in our midst, the power of the Spirit that is alive and active in our world, and that calls us into this time of worship together. So we invite you to stand, embody your spirit as we join together in our call to worship this morning. We gather from the north and the south, the east and the west. God's steadfast love endures forever. We gather in places of calm and times of storm. God's steadfast love endures forever. We gather as our full selves, just as we are. God's steadfast love endures forever. We gather trusting God's presence with us. God's steadfast love endures forever. We are gathered today by God's love. Come, Come let, let us worship. worship. Please remain standing for our first hymn, number 512 in the red hymnal. Let's sing together, Stand By Me. When the storms of life are raging, stand by me. faults and failures stand by me in the midst of faults and failures stand by me when i've done the best i can and my friends misunderstand thou who knowest all about me stand by me in the midst of persecution stand by me of persecution stand by me when my foes in war array undertake to stop my way thou who saved Paul and Silas 
and by me. When I'm growing old and feeble, stand by me. When I'm growing old and feeble, stand by me. When my life becomes a burden and I'm nearing chilly Jordan, how thou lily of the valley, stand by me. Amen. Let's remain standing for our affirmation of faith. Let's read from the screen or your bulletin. We are not alone. We live in God's world. We believe in God who has created and is creating, who has come in Jesus, the Word made flesh, to reconcile and make new, who works in us and others by the Spirit. We trust in God. We are called to be the church, to celebrate God's presence, to love and serve others, to seek justice and resist evil, to proclaim Jesus crucified and risen, our judge and our hope, in life, in death, in life beyond death. God is with us. We are not alone. Thanks be to God. Amen. You may be seated. I would like to invite all the children to come forward, if you would like. Of course, get up here. Am I a child? You should know I consider myself a child, and I'm way beyond that. So I guess when I come up, I should say, I would like anyone to join me up front who would like to. Would that be better? I'm going to sit with you, too. See, even Pastor Scott's going to join us. Because I'm a big kid. <laughs> um, okay, so well, uh, the big kid here, I was telling Ann in the back of church, this has nothing to do with children's time that our youth who went on the mission trip last year asked me if we could schedule our mission trip in Florida next year so that we can visit Pastor Scott while we're on the mission trip. So I hope that lets them know they are going to dearly be missed by more than just all of us adults who express it. The children just, you know, they don't express it as much as we do. How are all of you this morning? Everyone good? I think some of you have been so busy, you're all tan and I haven't hardly seen you which means you've been playing ball and you've been doing theater things and you've been busy. Is that a good thing? Yeah? Okay so I'll answer, I'll, I'll share a little bit of a message with you. How about that? Today the um, message that Pastor Scott is going to share with you talks about a scripture where Jesus' disciples got super scared and Jesus was like, you guys, really? You don't trust me? Like, I'm with you. You're supposed to always trust me. And sometimes it's really hard to remember to trust. But let me ask you this. For those of you that play a sport, do your coaches ever say, go out there. I know you can do this. And even if you're kind of scared and don't think you can make the goal or don't think you can catch the ball, if you listen to your coach, does it happen? Does it work out? Sometimes it does, right? And like if you're at school and your teachers are teaching you something and you think, there's no way I'm going to understand how to do that math problem. And then several weeks later, you're like, oh my goodness, this is the easiest thing ever, right? But when you first start out, you kind of are questioning like, I don't think I can do that. Or if someone's teaching you how to tie your shoes, you think, I don't, I don't think I'm ever going to get this. But you trust who's showing you, and you keep doing what they're showing you, and you get it, right? We've trusted Pastor Scott for a lot of years to try to guide us and show us how to apply the stories that God has taught to our everyday lives. And that's what Jesus is telling his disciples in that story, is he's saying, it's not always easy. It doesn't always make sense to tie the string around the loop, but I promise if you trust me, it works. So be calm and just trust me. So as you go through your week, whether you're listening to Pastor Scott or whether you're listening to your parents or whether you're listening to your coach or your teacher or whatever, remember that God is always there. Take a deep breath and think, okay, 
I know God is with me. I can't forget that. All right? Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you so very much for always being with us, for always guiding us. And we pray that as we go out into this week, we will remember all of those special people who help us focus on you, who help us keep our hearts and our minds in a loving way as you would have it. And all the children said, amen. amen. You guys are going to have to get louder with that. Like, <laughs> amen. Can you do that for me next time, maybe? I know you boys are not quiet. I've spent enough time with you. <laughs> have an awesome week.
a beautiful way to enter into a time of prayer. This is our time in our service where we share together our joys and our concerns, where we bring before God all that is swirling in our lives. Today, we are praying with Nancy Pennington and her family as her brother, one of her brothers passed away earlier this week. We also know that there are probably many others in our community, silent prayers held close, and we light candles each and every week. Some of these have already been lit with silent prayers rising to God. They join the ones that are lit at home from those of you who are worshiping online. They acknowledge that sometimes we have words for the cries of our hearts, our joys, and our sorrows, and sometimes we simply do not. And the promise in scripture is that the Holy Spirit intercedes on our behalf, raising our prayers to God like incense. We know that there are many things in our world that grieve our hearts, many things in our own personal lives that perhaps we hold close. And so we come into this time of prayer. There will be a time of silence and our response as the congregation is, Lord, in your love, hear our prayers. Let us pray. Gracious and holy and loving God, you meet us where we are, with our hopes and our dreams, our hurts and our sorrows, our tears and our laughter. You meet us and you love us as your beloved creation. And so we pray. We pray for ourselves this day. We pray that we may know your deep abiding love for us. Lord, in your love, hear our, our prayers. prayers. We pray for those bent and bruised and wounded places in our lives where we need to be able to know your loving, healing touch. Lord, in your love, hear yeah, our prayers. prayers. We pray for what we can see around us. We pray for the needs of our friends and neighbors that are known to us. We pray for those needs around the world that we see on the news. Lord, in your love, hear yeah, our prayers. prayers. And we also pray for the needs the hopes, the dreams, the hurts, and the sorrows we cannot see. Those that are nearby us, sitting with us in worship, in the pew or at home, and those who are far away whose names we don't know. We ask for your love, your peace, to breathe into those spaces. Lord, in your love, hear our prayers. We pray, O oh God, knowing and trusting the power of your transforming love in our own lives, in this community, and so far beyond. Lord, in your love, hear our yes. prayers. Amen. Amen. Let's continue in worship with singing a hymn. You may remain seated as we sing number 474, Precious Lord, Take My Hand.
Our scripture this morning comes from the Gospel of Mark. On that day when evening had come, he said to them, let us go across to the other side. And leaving the crowd behind, they took him with them in the boat, just as he was. Other boats were with him. A great windstorm arose and the waves beat into the boat so that the boat was already being swamped. But Jesus was in the stern asleep on the cushion and they woke him up and said to him, teacher, do you not care that we are perishing? And waking up, he rebuked the wind and said to the sea, be silent, be still. Then the wind ceased and there was dead calm. He said to them, why are you afraid? Have you still no faith? And they were filled with great fear and said to one another, who then is this that even the wind and the sea obey him? Holy wisdom, holy word. Thanks be to God. Amen. Amen, amen. We've been in the Gospel of Mark now for several weeks. Um, and the, the, the chapter 4 of Mark that we're, we're, we've been reviewing is one parable after another until you get to this final story about the storm on the sea. And I want to talk a little bit today about what that means for us and how we apply these stories in our own lives. Because you know what the stories are, but do you think about what they could mean to you? What they could mean in your own experiences, in your own testimony to the world. And sometimes we say testimony, you get kind of like, oh, I don't do testimony. Everything you do is a testimony. Amen? Everything you do is a testimony. Because it could be that you do the right thing or you do the wrong thing. If you're nice to people or you're kind to people, if you, if you trust God, if you treat people fairly, that's your witness. Everything that you do. But remember, the Gospel of Mark chapter 4 begins with the story Jesus is teaching. And it's interesting because he teaches from a boat. Because he's been gathering this huge crowd of people following him wherever he goes. And he's been healing and teaching. And uh, he, he, he gets to this one place and the people are crowding him up to, this, to the side of the sea, to the, to the shore. And he says, he gets into a boat and the boat now becomes his pulpit. So he's standing or sitting in this boat out on the water all day long teaching people these stories. One of the things you need to remember about scripture is scripture is a collection of stories and books. They've been canonized, they've been, they've been separated out, out from other stories and books because they tell us things about God. They help us to understand God more clearly. They help us to look more deeply into who God is and parables are one of the best ways to do that because parables are endless in their interpretation because they tell you a story, they tell you some idea about God, they help you understand it. And it's not everything that Jesus ever said, it's not everything, anything everyone said about God. In fact the scriptures tell us that, that if they wrote down everything that Jesus said there wouldn't be enough books in the whole world to hold all that. And so these are the stories that were selected that really touch the people and help them to see God more clearly. So the first one was a story about Jesus said is as if someone went out and sowed seeds. They were scattering the seeds and some of them landed on the path. Well the ones that landed on the path couldn't grow up because people trampled on top of them and they just got, they couldn't make it. The ground was hard because it had been packed down from people walking on it forever and, and, and it wouldn't grow. And then some of the seeds went on the rocky soil and they sprouted up, but the rocky soil didn't allow them to get their roots down. They could get moisture and they couldn't survive and so the scorching heat just killed them off. And some of the seeds landed with all the thorn bushes and all the, you know, all the, 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 the weeds were just took over and they, the weeds and stuff took over all the nutrients and the seeds couldn't grow. But some seeds grew, landed on the good soil, right? And for those, there was an abundant harvest. Now, this story about the seeds is not about seeds, is it? It's about our witness. It's about the things that we do, the things that we say. And if we plant good seeds in fertile soil, people that are willing to listen, if the words you say go into listening ears, people that are receptive, there's a great harvest to be had. And one of the reasons it's important to keep this story in mind is that you don't control the conditions of the soil. You don't control the statement of someone else's mind. 
Sometimes we can tell them what we know is right and we know is fair, we know is loving, and they reject it. It's like the hard path. They're not willing to hear it. They're not willing to receive that information. Or there's so many things going in their life that, that they just crowds it out like the, the seeds that landed in the, in the weeds. So not everyone's going to receive it and that's not anything you can do anything about. You continue to help people to see a better way. A way that really is supportive and helpful to other people. And then Jesus tells the story about if you had a lamp and you put it up on, on a lamp post, you wouldn't cover it with a bushel, right? So your witness, the things you say and do need to be out there, need to be in a way that people can hear it, not hidden. So the light becomes your witness, right? That's your witness, is your light. Your light to the world to shine us into the darkest corners. Because our society certainly has a lot of dark corners. And a lot of people that want to hide in the darkness because they realize what they're doing is hateful. And yet they don't want to change. So shine your light into those places. Help others to see that there's more than what, could, than what they think it is the society or, or, or mankind is limited in some ways. So you shine that light, don't cover it up. And then Jesus used the metaphor of the growing seed, that how we plant a seed in the ground and uh, although Jennifer's here, she can explain, shooter can tell you, explain exactly how this tree comes up. But, but most of us cannot, right? Most of us have no idea. We put it in the ground, we put some water on it, and the sun shined on it, and a plant comes up. God's promised future. Well, again, it's not about the seed, is it? It's about planting good things in the right places to have the best results. It's part of your witness. It's part of what you do to help others to see a better way. A way that is understanding and loving and comforting and equitable for all people. Then we had the parable of the mustard seed. And whenever we hear that, we think about the, you know, if you have the faith of the size of a mustard seed, that's not this parable. This is a different parable, actually, but it uses the mustard seed. And it says the mustard seed represents like the tiniest of seeds. This was, this was also a metaphor, right? Because it wasn't probably the smallest seed that existed. But they used it as that. That was a, the, the, the way they used that uh, image. But you start off with something tiny. And it ends up being this huge shrub that the birds can nest in. And they can survive and they can live in the shade. And we can sit under the shade of this tree. And I reminded you that this is the same idea that is from this axiom that we're called to plant trees under whose shade we never sit. You remember us talking about that? That this is things that we do to, to pave the way to a better future. And that's what I hope I've done here in Kirksville, that some of what I've done here has paved your way for a better future. Amen. That some of the things I've said, you'll in incorporate into the way you think and the way you teach and the way you help others to see God. That the, the future is bright. I was telling someone earlier today that Kirksville is like, is like this gym, this hidden gym up in the northern Missouri. Because if you don't, don't live up this way, you don't have much reason to drive through, right? And it's not, not, that's, not a, that's not a bad thing. But it's something that you should treasure. That you have a beautiful place to live. And you've got beautiful people and beautiful community to be a part of. And so the, the, you plant good seeds and continue to nurture them throughout, throughout all of your life. And so that brings us to today's text. Today's text, the day is getting long, right? And the sun is about to go down. And it's becoming towards the end of the day. And Jesus has been sitting in this boat all day teaching or standing. And he says, let's go to the other side. I think we've done all we can do here today. And so he and the disciples are, well, they, they're, they're, he's already in the boat, right? But they join him. And it says they take him just as he is. And Reverend Jennifer and I were struggling with it. What does that mean, just as he is? And I said, he's already in the boat. They just have to go, right? He's already there. And so they set off across the water. Now Jesus is understandably tired. And sometimes I think we forget the full humanity of Jesus when we think about the full divinity. But he's both, 
right? And so as you and I get tired, like after this afternoon I may take a nap. But this idea that, you know, after you get worn out and you've used up all the brain power you can as he's been teaching all day, he falls asleep. As they row their way or sail their way, we don't know if it's a sailboat or what kind of boat it is, but they're going across the Sea of Galilee and Jesus falls fast asleep. Well, all of a sudden the storm comes up. Have you ever been out in the water when a storm comes up? If you've been out fishing or spending the day on the lake? I remember one time very distinctly we saw the black clouds coming in from a distance. We'd been out skiing on the, I think it was Truman Lake. And uh, we had some friends with us and uh, we knew we had to head for shore because we didn't have much time. So we head towards the dock and I drop Ann and, the, and our friends off. And we may have had kids with us. I can't remember if the children were there or not. But anyway, they were going to bring the the van with the boat trailer down to the loading, uh, to the, uh, to the ramp, and I was waiting out in the boat to, to drive it up on the trailer. Well, before they got there, the storm hit, and it's hailing like crazy. It's raining so hard. It's hit pelting me on the head, and I'm thinking, I'm going to die before they get the trailer. And unfortunately, our friend didn't know how to back up a trailer either, and so <laughs> I'm sitting there going, one more time. Get it on the ramp, please. <laughs> but you know, I felt a little bit like the disciples when the, when the storm is roaring around them and it's crashing over the gunnels of the boat. It's filling the boat with water and they go, it won't be much longer until we have sunk and we'll be dead. And they cry out to Jesus, wake up, don't you care that we're perishing? I mean, they're not telling Jesus to stop the storm. They don't even know he can stop the storm at this point. They're trying to wake him up because they need someone else bailing water, right? They need someone else getting the water out of the boat so they can make it across to the other side. Jesus wasn't concerned about it. He said, why, why are you afraid? He says, peace, be still. And the storm stops. And the water's calm. And the disciples with him in the boat said, Who is this that even the wind and the rain listen to him? Who is this that can do this? It's Jesus, the Son of God. The creator and sustainer of life is his Father. And he says, if you know me, you know the Father. He himself is God incarnate. So stopping the storm was not a big problem for him. But it made all the difference to those who thought they were perishing. It made all the difference for them to have their lives saved by the fact that Jesus was there with them. Now part of the problem of a story like this that it's easy to jump to conclusions that says, well, if I have Jesus in the boat with me, there's no storms going to come my way. Doesn't work that way, <laughs> unfortunately. They still come your way. But you've got the one who loves you more than anything else in the whole world in the boat with you. And you have an opportunity to get through this if you allow God to guide you, to direct you, to give you peace, to give you hope, to give you a future. And part of my experiences here is that I've walked through a lot of storms with you. Individually, I look out and I see people's faces that I've seen in good times and in bad in situations that were hard, in times that were challenging, and in good times. We've experienced that together. And it's hard to let that go. But you don't have to let it go. Because we're part of, we're a community. We're part of the same community together. We'll always be connected in some way. And I hope that you tell people, well, I remember when Pastor Scott said something that really helps me to see that there is hope. There's encouragement for another day. And someday you may wake up and say, 
yell out to God, don't you care that I'm perishing here? I bet all of us have said something like that at one time or another. Don't you care, God? And we're assured that God does care, that God wants us to be okay. The disciples had another proof that Jesus is the Lord when they experience this calming of the storm. But it's not just about Jesus calming storms. It's about Jesus being at our side. Each and every one of us. The Spirit of God is within us to give us strength and courage for the future. As I said, we've all experienced storms in our life. It might be a diagnosis of some life-changing illness. As you know, your life will never be the same. It might be some accident or something that happened in your life and all you can think of is, why me? Why did this happen to me? Don't you know, don't you care that I'm perishing? But we turn to God and we say, Lord, see me through. That's why I chose that song. When the storms of life are raging, what is it? Stand by me, right? Stand by me. That's what we want. That's what we have. That's the assurance that we get. Might have been the loss of a loved one or the loss of a job or might be some disappointment in a friend or a family member. Something happened that you weren't expecting. So many times we feel like our boat is being swamped. And we need to bail water and we can't bail fast enough. Or a hole's got a bucket in it. I mean, a bucket's got a hole in it. That's <laughs> <laughs> kind of a funny story because, as you know, for 10 years of my life, I sold buckets for a living, so. <laughs> Raised my kids with buckets, I don't know. But we all need help. And sometimes we feel like we need it right now. And one of the things I want to assure you about is that you are part of that witness. Standing by one another in community with one another is what makes all the difference. Being there to help each other is a representative, you're a representative of God. That's what it means to be Christian. To be like a little Christ. Now you're not necessarily little, but you are, you are the children of God, of God. You are the people that represent God. So many people, the only Jesus they see in their lifetime is you. And so your witness has to be on target, helping others to see that there's a future, a brighter, a brighter day ahead. When we face these storms, and we faced our swamped boat, so to speak, We know some storms pass quickly, and some storms seem to linger for hours or days. And yet God never abandons us. Not only do we have Jesus at our side during these times, but we have each other. And that's so essential. That's so essential. This idea of living in community with one another is what the church is about. The church is the body of Christ. And you need to stay connected with each other in any way that you possibly can. That's so essential. This living in community is an essential part of what it means to be Christian. I know many people that say, well, I can be Christ at home. I can be Christian at home and I don't have to go to church. And I said, yeah, all that's true. But it's easier if you're in community with other people, let me tell you. It's absolutely easier. Going it alone like the Lone Ranger is not what Christ called for us to do. It's not what he, it's not the vision. The vision is that we live in community supporting one another. And this is always hard in our society because our society is very individualistic. And we have this thought that, well, if I'm okay, everything's okay. I don't really care about the people outside my circle. Do you see how problematic that is? We've got to reach out beyond our circle. 
We've got to reach the other people out there. Paul writes about this. The Apostle Paul writes about this in his letter to the Hebrews chapter 10. This is verse 24, 25. Paul writes, And let us consider how to encourage one another to love and good deeds. Let us consider how to encourage one another to love and good deeds, not neglecting to meet together, as is the habit of some, but encouraging one another and all the more as you see the day approaching, meaning Jesus' return. Don't get out of the habit of meeting together. Don't get out of the habit of communicating with one another, supporting one another. You are the hands and feet and the mouthpiece of Christ. You are the people that give others the hand up they need. You are the people that help others to, to flee from oppression. You are the ones to help keep people fed and housed and clothed. And I know you can't take care of everyone yourselves, but in community you can. The community is all, is, is all important to moving forward. Neglecting to meet together causes the body to become weak and vulnerable. So I encourage you not to do that. Well, in 1945, Rodgers and Hammerstein, well known for writing musicals, wrote and produced a musical named Carousel. And in this musical, it's the story of two friends and co-workers, a, a lady named Julie Jordan and Carrie Pipperidge. You don't need to remember those names, that's all right. But Julie and Carrie happen to go to the carnival one day, and there is a carnival barker there, and when you know the one that says, come on, get on the carousel, come ride my ride. They want you to come do whatever that the carnival does. They're, they're, they're encouraging you to have fun at the carnival. But they meet this, this uh, guy named Billy Bigelow. Well, the, the story is full of a lot of stereotypes, so forgive me for that because it's from 1945. But this idea of someone that works at the carnival is kind of a no good nick, if you know what I mean. And it's not the kind of person that the mother of Julie and Carrie would want them to meet. But they met Billy Bigelow anyway, and Julie becomes romantically involved with Billy, and he loses his job over this, and she loses her job at the mill where she and Carrie work together because she doesn't get back home in time for curfew. Now it's hard for us to understand that a factory would have curfew for the workers, but we're talking about a long time ago. Well, Billy is kind of desperate because he's lost his job at the carnival, doesn't have any money, and he gets convinced by another guy who's uh, not very moral, uh, moral in his life to rob someone so they'd have some quick money. Well, Billy and this friend, so-called friend, attempt to rob the guy and it doesn't work out. In fact, Billy dies in the robbery. And the story gets to this high point in the end of Act 2, or middle of Act 2, where Julie is now holding the dying body of Billy, her love. And she doesn't know how she can go on. Because life is so hard. And she had future plans for her and Billy. Well, there's another character in the story named Nettie Fowler, who's, a, who's actually a cousin of Julie. And she comes along and she knows that Julie's in a fix. And she wants her to be encouraged. She wants her to know that she'll be by her side for the rest of her life. So Nettie promises her love and support to Julie in her greatest time of need. That's the kind of love we want to emulate. That's the kind of things we need to do for others to know they're not alone. So I'd like to share this song with you, We'll Never Walk. Hold your head up high 
And don't be afraid of the dark at the end of the storm is a golden sky and the sweet silver song of the lark walk on through the wind walk on through the rain though your dreams be tossed and blown walk on walk on with hope in your heart and you'll never walk alone you'll never walk storm hold your head up high and don't be afraid of the dark at the end of a storm lies a golden sky and the sweet silver song of the Friends, this table is always, always, always a reminder that we are not alone and that we gather together, that we gather at a banquet table that is not of our own making. We gather together today with our joys, with our tears, with a reminder that God is with us. And so whether you are worshiping online or you are here in this space, know that you are welcome. This is not our table. It is the table of grace that God has set out for us. It's been a privilege to serve you from this table. And as we approach this again today, remember that God loves us, that there's so many times that all of us have failed one another or failed God, and yet we're still invited. It's still an open table. It's still there for all of us. God's grace is sufficient no matter what happens in our lives. So we have a prayer confession I invite you to read with me. Gracious and loving God, we, we acknowledge we that life is often overwhelming. We are overwhelmed by the immensity of our own needs and the needs around us. 
We long to follow you. Help us to know and trust your loving, empowering presence through it all. Hear this good news. The creating, redeeming, and sustaining love of God is with us in every season. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. Amen. Amen. And as God's beloved creation, we invite you to stand, to move around as you need to, to share the peace of Christ in the comments or online here in this space. The peace of Christ be with you. And also with you. We get a peace of Christ be with you. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. We give thanks to the Lord our God, who is the creator and sustainer of all, who formed us in God's own image and breathed life into us, who loves us eternally, even when we turn away, who delivers us from our brokenness. We praise God for the gift of God's Son, Jesus the Christ, who was anointed by the Holy Spirit, who healed the sick and set free those who were oppressed, who fed the hungry and welcomed sinners, who delivered us from the slavery to sin and death, who gave us a new covenant by water and the Spirit. And on the night that Jesus was betrayed, he met in the upper room with his disciples and continued to show love for them, even though often they turned away and one had actually betrayed him. But they met to celebrate the Passover, that God was there with them in the boat, so to speak, that God was always with them, that through the toughest times of their lives and times of captivity in Egypt and other places where they were in exile, God continued to deliver them and to show them a way. And Jesus did a very humbling thing when he got on his knees to wash their feet to truly show them what it means to be a servant leader, first you need to serve. And that's the call for all of us. Whether you're here in Kirksville or wherever you are in, your, in the community or around the world, you're called to serve each other, to help others to see that God loves them. And he said, I give you a new commandment, to love one another as I have loved you. If we truly take that to heart, I think we can address many of these issues that we have in our society. If we seek to love other people the way God loves us, if we accept other people the way God accepts us, to show other people God's love even when that's hard, the world will be a better place. I'm I just am convinced of it. But it was during the meal that Jesus took some of the bread and after giving thanks, he broke it and gave it to them saying, take and eat. This is my body which is broken for you. And when the meal was finished, Jesus took the cup and after giving thanks, he said, this is the blood of the new covenant poured out for you and for many for the remission of sin. And if you drink of this cup and eat of this bread, do so in memory of me. And so as Christ first lifted that bread long ago, we lift ours now, knowing and trusting the power of the Holy Spirit that brings us together as one body. When Jesus lifted his one cup, we lift our individual cups with full confidence that through the grace of God we are united into one cup, the cup of grace and salvation through our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Let us pray. Almighty God, we pray that you pour out your Holy Spirit in these gifts of, of bread and wine that they truly become the body and blood of Jesus Christ, our Savior within us that when we go forth in this place, we can be the witness to the world that we are called to be, that we can be confident that you are in the boat with us, and that we are not perishing, but we will have eternal life through your love and through your grace. Let it be so. Amen. Amen. And now we pause to bless this meal together in one voice. Let us pray. 
Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thy is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Amen. And now, now we feast at the table. For those who are worshiping online, we invite you to partake now. Jennifer, the body of Christ broken for you. Thanks be to God. And the blood of Christ shed for you. Thanks be to God. Scott, the body of Christ given for you. Amen. Cup of salvation given for you. All is prepared for those who are worshiping online. We hope this is a beautiful time of joy and reflection. For those who are in the space, we invite you to come forward in the direction of the ushers to receive, to kneel, to light candles as you feel led. And if you would prefer to be served in your seat, Teresa will come and find you. Come.
Now we pray this prayer together as we offer our gifts and our lives to God. Let us pray. Eternal God, God we give, give you thanks for this holy mystery in which, which you have given yourself to us, us one body gathered in you. We offer you ourselves now in gratitude and love. All, all that we are and all that we have come freely from you. Grant now that we may go into our days in the strength of your spirit to give ourselves for others. In the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen.
closing hymn is one that you may not be that familiar with. Uh, we've done it before, but not in a while. But it's one that um, actually my wife Ann suggested we do today, and I am wholeheartedly agreed it was the right song. It's called Draw the Circle Wide. And what that's, what that's talking about is this, it's kind of core to my ministry, is that the circle of influence you have needs to be as wide as possible, because God's love is deep and wide. Not narrow, not excluding people, but including all the people. All the people are God's children, all made in God's image. So let's sing together, Draw the Circle Wide. part now again circle wide, draw it wider still, let this be our song, no one stands alone, standing side by side, draw the circle, draw the circle wide, amen, you may be seated. We invite you to be seated for just a few moments. We will be celebrating in just a few moments downstairs, but as we do so, we ritualize endings and beginnings, and today we are beginning our farewell. And so we invite you into this short time of recognition of where we are and where we are headed as a congregation. Well, I thank you for the love and support you've shown me while I've ministered among you. I'm grateful for the ways my leadership has been accepted and the love that you've shown. Your ministry among us has embodied a generous, gentle, loving spirit. Today we give thanks for the ways you have honored your ordination vows and blessed so many in this congregation and the Kirksville community, preaching the gospel, administering the sacraments, keeping confidence, affirming questions, inviting prayer, holding boundaries, blessing the chaos, and helping others experience safety, challenge, and the love of the body of Christ. Your influence on our faith and faithfulness will not leave us with your departure. We offer you grace and release for anything that feels unfinished in your ministry here. Thank you for being companions on the journey 
I encourage your ministry here and will pray for you continued, continued work of love in Kirksville and beyond. We are grateful for the relationships you have built in this community. Your presence and caring in our joys and sorrow and growth and the deep spiritual connections you have made among us through visits and baptisms, weddings and funerals and so many other of the ordinary moments of our lives, we give you thanks for the pastoral care you have provided, understanding that from this point forward, Pastor Kwan and I will be filling those roles. Today, your role in the lives of the members of this community has changed from that of pastor to that of friend. We know that Anne has been an important part of our community together, and we invite you to come forward to receive this prayer and blessing. We invite you all to respond together to this beautiful life in ministry. Let us pray. Gracious God, bless, bless your, your servants, Scott, Scott and Anne. Surround them with our gratitude and love in this season of change that they would sense your presence and delight in their daily life. Thank you for giving them to us to know as siblings in Christ and workers for peace. Creating God who makes all things new, prepare your hearts and minds for new beginnings. Jesus Christ, whose story makes us whole, knit your love for this call into the fullness of who you are spirit of mystery who comes beside us with power, guide your discernment and delight from this day on and forevermore. And now a blessing for all of you. May the peace of God which passes all understanding keep your hearts and your minds in the knowledge and the love of God and the Son Jesus Christ our Lord and the blessing of God Almighty the Father, Son and the Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you always. Amen. Amen. Let's stand and sing. on home.